It's a new year, and here are 10 new tips for any Destiny 2 players. And this is not just for beginner players. There are some of these tips that, honestly, I didn't even know before I did this video. First off, if you ever want to try to power up your weapons and your power level, and you're trying to figure out with your weapons and armor what level they're at currently, like what power level. Well, obviously you can look at them individually, but did you know if you do the left trigger on like PlayStation or use E on the PC, it will show you all the power level and all your weapons and armor that are currently equipped at the same time. This is really useful if you're trying to power up at the beginning of the season, you're trying to figure out which piece of armor or which weapon you need to level up to get that next level. Obviously, anti-barrier mods are useful for stunning barrier champions. Did you also know that you can use them to shoot through number of shields within the game that you might not have thought about? You can shoot through hydras, phalanxes, knights, hobgoblins, taken vandals, and scorn shields. Again, anything that has a shield on it that prevents you from hitting it, you can shoot through with anti-barrier. If you're focusing on Engrams to get spiky armor, what I mean by spiky armor is two of the stats being 20 or higher, you often use a ghost mod to do that. One of the things to keep in mind is if you want to guarantee that you get either stats at the very top or the very bottom on the second spike, is just make sure you do it either at the top three or the bottom three. So for instance, if I do discipline right here, that's going to guarantee that I'm going to get a discipline one, but then the other one is going to be in the top three stats, not the bottom three stats. So I'll either get one of mobility, resilience, or recovery. One other tip I'll give you is that most of the people watching this video are not subscribed to my channel, and that's a shame because I give plenty of tips out to part-time guardians to learn how to be better at the game over time. So if that's of interest to you, please subscribe to the channel and check out for future videos. So if you're working to do the weekly strike burn to get you a pinnacle, or if you're doing raid achievements that are dependent on having a specific burn on the entire fire team, you don't need to do that until you actually get to the end of the encounter. So you can go up right towards the end of the encounter, and as long as you do it before the final chest pops, you can switch out your subclass really quickly and get that accomplished. This is more of a public service announcement, but if you're in the Corrupted Strike, and you have that ball that you need to use on the elevator, take shields down, or Sadia in her two phases before she you finish up the strike, make sure after you pick it up to throw it to another player. This allows you to charge it up enough that when you throw it at either Sadia or on the elevator, you'll take the shields down of what you're trying to do. So again, don't just pick them up and throw them. Make sure you pick them up and throw them to another character and then have them throw it and then you'll get what you need to get done. If you're in Dares of Eternity after the first encounter and if you're trying to guarantee that you get Star Horror's favor in the middle encounter, just make sure as you're going up to the little thing that kind of boops you ahead that if you look at the spinning circles up there, you'll see that there are three things that will rotate in a circle. Line those up every time, and if you jump through the thing at the same time, you will always, as long as your timing's good, you will always get through and get that Star Horse favor for the next encounter. In duality, one of the things that can really mess you up is when the Cabal drop their backpacks and then something accidentally shoots them and blows you up. One way to avoid this is just use something with a disintegrating attack to kill them and the backpacks won't drop. What I use specifically is I use Assassin's Cal and I use my melee to kill them and when you do that, the backpacks don't drop. Did you know that if you go over to the hangar where all the ships are docked, if you go into a specific terminal, you can actually call your jump ship to be able to see it. And that's kind of cool if you want to actually see your what your jump ship looks like in the game itself. This is one that I wasn't aware of, but do you know that there's an actual cover system in Destiny 2? Now obviously you can crouch and peek out and things like that, but if you're crouching behind something that's about chest high, and then you hit the left trigger on PlayStation, or again, it just depends on which console or how you have your thing set up, did you know you'll actually pop up and be able to shoot out of it and then be able to pop back down? That's something I didn't know about and definitely come in useful. Finally, this is a pretty old tip, but some of you may not know this. If you're in Crucible, in control, and you actually sit and take the control points, which is what you're supposed to be doing, you actually get a greater percentage of super energy brought to you than if you let the fire team do it by itself. So I guess the moral of the story is actually help your team capture the zones. Well, that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.